Hello people, this is George with yet another Call of Dragons video and today we are continuing to speak regarding Legion types. Uh, last video was regarding Marksmen and we uh, explained and talked in details uh, what the advantages and disadvantages are regarding Marksmen and today we will be speaking regarding long -lived trends, uh, which are mages for a Spring Warden uh, faction and we will just speak regarding mages in general okay uh, first of all everybody should check the skills of the mages because every faction faction has something unique regarding their troops uh, in terms of spring wardens they have 20 percent additional defense while there is a friendly legion nearby uh, i need i should note that uh, I won't be speaking regarding one versus one duels in the game. Like we are speaking regarding wars, where there is hundred pe people uh, versus hundred people, lot of legions, everything is, is in chaos, or in events where you should be using your mages or any legion. So, uh, if you have your opinion regarding some troop type, feel free to share. This game is a, a long run. It has a many different experiences and it's always important to look after people's opinions right so we already spoke regarding natural affinity which just gives you 20 percent uh, of the defense for 15 seconds and that's pretty good buff right 20 percent in defense is good let's speak about stats uh, that mages have and why mages are so unique and why mages are so popular in the game because if we're going we're gonna to look at the stats, they don't have highest HP, they don't have highest attack, they don't have defense uh, or even magic defense the highest. But what they have is their attack range, right? Their attack range is biggest in the game. It says very far. Let's compare to the marksman, right? Marksman has a medium range. So in terms of stats, there is nothing unique. But what is unique here is attack range. And I will be speaking regarding attack range in a later uh, video. So, as it is before, we're gonna speak and study unit advantage system. Uh, what's important here? What does it, uh, what learns, what gives us, and what we should look after? This is a system which game, game gives, game gives us, but. Uh, in real time, there is different experiences, different situations, which I I already had, and I want to share my opinion, right? I'm already in a season 2, uh, still have not paid a single dollar, which means I can't speak uh, regarding Lilia, but what I can speak is about my real-time experience. So, if we look at the uh, system, it says, uh, mages are countering infantry, but marksmen are countering mages. It does not say anything regarding cavalry. Well, why mages counter infantry, right? The answer is pretty simple. Infantry has the lowest amount of uh, movement speed in the game, and mages have the highest amount of attack range in the game. So, it will be hard for infantry units to get to mages, because mages are dealing damage from really far. Why marksmen are countering mages because uh, marksmen are second in attack range they have counter-attack damage counter-attack damage is really important and also marksmen uh, has a defense break in their heroes and defense break on a mage units are really important because mages has one of the lowest physical defense in the game so that's why that's the sole just like couple of reasons why marksmen are countering mages but still marksmen are not the most popular uh, legion type in the game mages are simple reason why mages are one of the most popular uh, legion type in the game because during wars when there is 100 per person uh, fighting with 100 person range is really important uh, when you have your alliance members, they have infantry, they are attacking with infantry, cavalry can't really hit you. It's really, it will be really hard for calves to hit you while you are mage. And trust me, if cavalry are hitting you, that means you are 100% uh, losing the war. That's why 
Uh, in general, cavalry is the weakest legion type in the game right now, uh, and that's why mages are one of the strongest legion type in the game. Simple fact, just because it's really hard for you to catch uh, mages because of the attack range. Like, trust me, you will be f have really, really lot of fun uh, playing with mages just because you are dealing damage from really far. And nobody can catch you. Infantry has a low movement speed. Cavalry has a lot of, like, infantry and even marksmen ahead of you until they will get to you. Marksman is really slow. Uh, and marksman still has low amount of uh, lower attack range than you. So, you are kind of safe, in a sense, because you are dealing damage from the far, right? Uh, and also the defense, which uh, long-lived trains are giving you, will help you a lot, because majors are, ha majors are having the one of the lowest physical defenses in the whole game. Now, what's the most important? Of course, the most important is heroes, right? Uh, and as you know, like even from the beta version of this game, Lilia has been one of the strongest heroes in the whole game. Uh, but in this video, I won't be speaking regarding Lilia. Simple the fact that I just don't have her. And when I don't have my own experience from the game, I won't gonna take a Widow and won't gonna speak regarding it. So in this video, we won't gonna speak about Lilia because I I just don't have it. I have not spent a single dollar in this game, and I will speak what I have, what I have used in the past, and what I have been using using currently. So in my opinion, Waldir is the must. You need to awaken Waldir, which I have, but. I don't have the levels requir required to unlock the skill. Waldir is one of the most powerful uh, epic heroes in the game. It has like perfect combination for a battlefield, right? Magic, PvP, and skills. Excels at dealing heavy damage with rage skill, which is good for mages. Excels at fighting other lords in the field, as I said, wars, which I'm sure everybody is having wars in the game. And yeah, Walder is mage. Why Walder is so powerful? Because every skill that he has can be used in the battlefield. Shield factor, uh, more damage. Here is more damage. Skill damage factor. You can hit two legions while attacking one. That's like one of the, like, that's almost the perfect combination. And what should we pair? With Walder, right? Well, in like you can easily see the combination just clicking, right? Walder is like Ice Mage, and Welling is Ice Mage too. Uh, this is my main mage, uh, my main my main legion with mages. Uh, that's I have been using like all all the time. Like you can you can never go wrong with playing Walder and Welling. Uh, of course, if you will have Welling Awakened, then you can pair it with Lilia. But as I said, I can't say much regarding Lilia because I simply doesn't have her. So why Water and Welling? Just because. Now, now look, Magic PvP skill, perfect. Magic PvP control, perfect. Both of them excels fighting in the battlefield. Like everything in these two heroes say that they're they're just perfect combination. Like I have never had any complaints regarding mages, regarding Waldir and Walvelin. I will be using like many many seasons, even if I will have other legions with other mage heroes. This is my main go-to. But still, we have a couple of more, right? We have Alwyn, which is mage, and we have Atheus, which is mage. Let's speak about Alwyn, right? If you want to play with Alwyn, don't think that you're gonna deal a lot of damage, right? Alwyn is all about debuffs. You are giving uh, opponents debuffs, they, they can't move, they are dealing additional damage to themselves, even there is some poison. So, if you are 100% free to play like me, and you like to ruin a day for a pay-to-win players, you can easily go with Alwyn, and they will struggle uh, with the Alwyn debuffs. 
that's a good, right? Like you can play even Walder with Alwyn, you can play with Velin uh, and Alwyn. If you have Awakened Alwyn, that's even better because you're gonna deal a lot of more damage, you're gonna do a lot more uh, debuffs to the opponent. So, like, in my opinion, Alwyn is not a damage dealer uh, hero, it's simply about debuffs, it's simply about negative effects. What about Atheus? Atheus is unique in a sense that it's a flying hero, and if you want to use Walder with Atheus or Velin with Atheus, of course it can work, because it's a magic hero, but it's also a PvP hero. But if we want to utilize uh, Atheus in a hundred percent, we need to match it with a flying hero too. So here comes Thea. Thea and Atheus with Celestials uh, will be amazing uh, hero pair for mages. Simple fact like uh, Atheus too does not deal a lot of damage, but it is giving a rage buffs. For example, look at this second skill extra rage gain, which means you're gonna uh, use your skills way faster, uh, HP bonus, healing received bonus, uh, march speed bonus, everything in here is bonuses, and if we're gonna go to the Thea, you're gonna see attack bonus, uh, defense attack, march speed bonus, same as Atheus, attack bonus, hero skill damage, like, even Thea has everything, like, buffing herself, as I said, Elwin is is giving a negative effects to enemies. Atheus is buffing yourself. But if you want to have a legion with mages which are dealing the highest damage, go with Waldir and Welling. If you are having fun ruining the days of the enemies, try Waldir with Elwin. And if you like to move around while flying, because flying units has a capability of flying over anything, you're gonna go with Thea with Atheus. That's like the main uh, mage marches, like main, main uh, mage hero pairs, which currently game in game is. That's my opinion, that's how I played this game in the past, uh, right now, and I'm planning to play it even more. And that's, that's all you need to know regarding heroes, right? Regarding artifacts, there are like a couple of choices, as always. Uh, I will speak from here because I don't have like uh, uh, enough gems. I won't gonna spend gems on anything else. Uh, like I'm always trying to pull artifacts from the most uh, natural way. That's why in artifacts, let's speak from the epic ones, right? Magic bomb is number one priority if you don't have anything legendary for mages. It's like there is no other choices in epic ones than time bomb uh, and you will be having fun playing with time bomb and you can see how you can play with time bomb, you just apply it to the enemy and if there is other enemies nearby they are getting damage also uh, let's speak if you don't have if you if you want to have a legendary one like you can choose it from uh, here which i have phoenix eye great like, I don't have any complaints, I'm using Phoenix Eye myself. If you will have a chance to get her, get it, try to get it. Uh, it's a perfect uh, artifact for mages. Uh, also, Tear of Arbon. Well, I have this artifact and I have been using it, using it in, like, Dragon Trail, in events, or maybe, like, on the season start... This healing which this artifact is giving is pretty good, like it is utility and support artifact which will be useful for you. I'm not gonna say that it's a number one priority, but it will be useful and for sure. Now, regarding other uh, mage uh, artifacts, well, if we have Phoenix Eye, if we have Tear Arbon, like they're all, they are number one priorities, like Phonics Eye is of course tier S and tier Arbon is like tier A and other than that if you don't have anything and you got like stuff of the Propet I will still use Magic Bomb okay uh, that's the artifacts that are currently in the game uh, I, I won't gonna speak uh, about artifacts which will be added or which are not in the game right now 
I'm speaking only with artifacts which we can pull right now from the chests. And S tier is Phoenix Eye. Tier Arbon is like A tier. In the Epics, S tier is Magic Bomb. And if you don't have Magic Bomb, if you don't have Tier Arbon, if you don't have Phoenix Eye, you can go with the like Staff of the Prophet. That, that will be fine. Like until you will get this one or Magic Bomb. That's it regarding the artifacts. And now, of course, I will be speaking regarding Warpets. Warpets are new addition in the game. And which Warpets will be good for you in order to be like have a good synergy with mages? Of course, Sapphire Phaedric is an amazing uh, Warpet for mages. Like, in my opinion, strongest one because it gives uh, opportunity to deal a lot of damage. Like Pain Bloom is a great uh, damage skill, and I have also mm, have videos regarding Safra Freydrake, uh, like having guide about uh, only about this Drake. And if you want to learn more about this Drake, uh, check the, that video which I already put like a couple of weeks ago. And there is like two warpets which are good with mages. One is Sapphire Frederick, and second one is, of course, here, Ice Lizard. Oh, it's not it's Sand. Ice Lizard. That's like second one, which you can use with mages, and the uh, better one is, of course, Sapphire Frederick. So, so, like, I won't gonna go in details about the skills, like, I'm sure you understand Legion Magic Attack will be good, like, Upgrade Pain Bloom will be good, and so on. Like, in this video, we won't gonna speak much regarding Warpets, because there are like, a lot of videos in my channel about Warpets. So, we already sp spoke regarding the fighting system, we already spoke regarding... Uh, uh, heroes, we already spoke regarding artifacts and war pits. I don't think there is much we can say. And here we go. This is my opinion regarding mages. This is how I play in uh, myself with mages. If you have different opinion, please share, let's discuss. Uh, if not, and if you like my video, click on like. Um, and like, I'm thankful that you are just watching the videos. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.